Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to first say thanks to the Richardson Symphony for the invitation to, to perform with them tonight. It's really nice. I've been looking forward to it for many months now. And I uh, appreciate it again that uh, all of you could be here. It's uh, nice to have a, a great audience. We've worked in this area many times, and some of you have seen us, and some hadn't, but we appreciate you being here. And if you have or if you, or if you haven't, it doesn't matter. But anyway, we've got a lot of music to play, and this is really fun for me to work with a big group like this. I brought some guys with me from Nashville. I'll tell you who they are in a little bit, but let's do some music. Let's play a song that uh, Ronnie Millsap had a big hit on. It's a beautiful thing called It Was Almost Like a Song. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome that mean man of the piano, Floyd Kramer.
Lloyd, if we're going to talk, let's let's scoot this around. Old Roy over there and I were wondering if you hit that hair with a ball peen hammer, if it would move any. Yes, it would. Huh? Now, wait a minute. <laughs> let's not talk about your hair. Either. How you yeah. doing? Huh? Yeah. I've never seen Floyd with his hair messed up. Have you? Oh, you. I've never. It won't I, mess up. It, see? It don't it, mess it's up. It's a spring, isn't it? <laughs> You're not going to let me touch it, are you? Thank you. I thought you'd recognize that song. A little good Texas song called San Antonio Rose. Now here's a peppy little song written about a town in South Central Tennessee. So a lot of you may have been there. Called Chattanooga Choo Choo.
My next guest has played on countless sessions by about every country music star that is anyone in country music. And he's one of the greatest men that I've known during my career, and he is certainly a brilliant musician. What a great stylist. Floyd Kramer. Thank you, Porter. Welcome, buddy. Thank you. It's great to be here. Well, great to have you here. And Thank you. Man, I'll tell you what, I've enjoyed so many of your great albums, and you are probably, I'd say, the best known musician I've ever met in my life. Well, that's a that's a compliment, I'm telling you. I well, appreciate that. And you've seen a lot of musicians. I have. You ain't joking, buddy. <laughs> that's Listen, right. And you actually came to Nashville just to be a session player, didn't you? Yeah, I was, it, you know, I thought, well, if I could make, you know, a couple of sessions a, a week, I could make a living, you know. Yeah. But I had gotten kind of into that before I came to Nashville through the Louisiana Hayride and yeah. coming up here to record with different people. And I knew that that was, you know, that's where I'd like to be. I knew Nashville was where I was going, where I wanted to be. Well, you know, I met you in the late 50s. You played on some sessions right. with mine. Absolutely. And contributed a lot to them. You know, you're, like, uh, you're such a, a great guy to be around, and you don't intimidate other musicians, I think is great of you, you know, because well, you're a brilliant player. And you develop such a unique style. Tell me a little bit about how that come about. Well, it's just country. You know, I, you know, I wish I could take credit for starting the style, but uh, Mother Maybell Carter played that style, and it really wasn't, uh, you know, so much in to a point, to a particular style. It was a country, really a country style, a country, a country style. fiddle. Yeah. And then it evolved kind of into the steel guitar area. And the bend and the string and on the, the banjo. And, and the banjo did the and same you, thing. And, and the foot pedal on the steel guitar. You wow. know, when that came in, that just almost, it's the same thing, you know. Well, it added a new dimension entirely well, to the piano. Though. Yeah, well, it's, Honestly, it did. And I, w I wanted to ask you, too, about Last Date, of course. I, is that your biggest record to ever Yeah, the, the biggest single that I've ever had. Probably. And hopefully that I'll have another one like that someday. But if I don't, that's that in a lifetime is more than most people would ever dream for. I would say that's probably the biggest selling instrumental in history. And it's just such a marvelous tune. You know what? I've seen you do it on the opera here. Right. And there's a mood comes over the audience when you just play yeah. the first few notes, man. Well, and I think music, no matter what it is, has an emotion to Oh, it does. To, you know, it don't matter if it's if it's sung, if it's played, and if you can transfer the emotion into music to playing, well, then it works too. So yeah. that has for me, and I, I I do my best, you know. Well, it's wonderful, and you know, music is is a statement. I I seen this happen one time, and I thought it was so strange. It was kind of a roundabout way of it happened. Bill Monroe was rehearsing down at uh, the TV station one day here, and uh, an uh, electric guitar player, I won't say who it was, but he <laughs> wanted to take a break on it. Yeah. And he just went blah, 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 all over it, you know. And right. Bill turned around to him and said, boy, that didn't say nothing. <laughs> well, that's now, true. Really? You know, you know, and music is a statement. Right. And when you play, you can tell you feel it in your, in in your, your heart. That's yeah. it. That's but, right. That's why, it, and I've, I love to hear you play, and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the opera tonight. And it doesn't seem to be many new instrumentalists now. I wanted to ask you about that. Wonder why there's not many instrumentalists, like play in the programming of t well, radio. Well, that's, that's something that I'm working on, and I'm sure Chet's working on, Boots Randolph's working on, Charlie Good. McCoy's working on, all right. instrumentalists. Uh, it's just a thing that's happened. It's, it's, it's evolution. Yeah, and you know maybe something good will uh, something will come out, and the record company will probably say, well, let's take, let's try this and see yeah. if it works. Yeah. So maybe that'll happen. If it doesn't, we always have albums and, and stuff like that to put out, and uh, performing, you know, concerts and so forth. Yeah. So, well, I hope they do because I just I miss hearing uh, instrumentals in the like on the radio. You know, like we used yeah. to hear uh, because I think they're great to be. No, nothing against singing because that's what I do. And, yeah. Uh, but. But I just think it's a nice well, break from yeah, that. Yeah, know? that's true. There's there's a lot of stations that do play instrumental music, and but to get them on the top, you know, playlist, a forty yeah. top forty playlist, that's hard to do. But well, y'all get on it here. <laughs> okay. I'll come out there to you now if you don't. <laughs> but it's great to have you, Tom. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you for it. Thank you, buddy. It's my pleasure. Folks, the heavier the star, the smaller the introduction. Here's world-renowned Mr. Floyd Kramer.
Thank you. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to say that it's a great pleasure to be here on the Grand Ole Opry. It's been a few months since I've been here, and it's always fun to come back to such a, a historic stage. And I know all of you people here are enjoying the evening. Those of you who are watching, that is really a true classic show. And I'm proud to be here. I would like to do a song, especially for a lady that was mentioned earlier, that was her 80th birthday this past week. I had the pleasure of doing a talk show with her, Chet Atkins and Roy Cuff a few years ago. The question was asked, uh, all of us, what our favorite songs were. Miss Minnie Pearl's song was, Have I Told You Lately That I Love You? And I'd like to do that for her and Henry. Kramer, ladies and gentlemen. Take another bow, Floyd.
Thank you. Uh, this next song was the theme from a movie, and the movie won an Academy Award a few years ago, and the song went on to become the number one pop song in the country. And we recorded it, and it's, uh, I think it's a beautiful song. I've got a little special introduction here I've got to do. Let's see if I can find the note. There it is. It's called Chariots of Fire. Thank you very much. Here's Ted Atkins, Jethro Burns, Roy Clark, howdy mom, Johnny Gimbel, <laughs> Boots Randolph, Danny Davis, Floyd Kramer, and Charlie McCoy in the Hee Haw Band. Let her go boys. <laughs>
Now, this is a, a happy medley. I like happy love song medleys. Uh, the first song on this medley uh, probably will hit a nerve on some of you because uh, it's about, it was written about a place where you found your first love on Blueberry Hill. In my case, it was out by the fire tower in South Arkansas. And I'm sure all of you have your own little individual places. But this is a happy love song with, and I think you'll know these songs. always worried about that ending until we get it. And that time we got it. It's one of those endings if you, if you were dancing, you'd wind up with one foot in the air, you know. That's great. I'd like to do now a song that's kind of a light classic, about as classical as you'll hear me tonight, but <clears throat> I'd like to do it for, especially for you people out there who may be <clears throat> starving a little to death for a little culture on this part of the show. <clears throat> And you have to get yourself, as you know, in the frame of mind to listen to this type of song. So you have to kind of think up, relax your mind. Well, think uppity, maybe that's the word for it. And uppity? Anyway, if you'll bear with me, this is called Prelude in C Minor. And I record it and I call it Prelude to Love.
Are we ready? Floyd, y'all set? Okay. He's set. He's set. This is a Billy Joel tune called the Root Beer Rag. Here again, Magic Floyd Kramer. <laughs> I don't know if you've been backstage watching the show. The way the show's been going, I think it's only proper that I ask you right now, just in case of an emergency, you do have underwear. Is that correct? <laughs> uh, I have underwear. Yeah, I'm not sure that I have them on. Well, <laughs> oh, boy, I tell you. Would you like someone to check for well, you? Well, no. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> stop it, Floyd. Stop William, it. Boy, we're in big trouble. We're in big Excuse trouble. Excuse me just a minute. Uh, the, no. Everything's fine. Everything's cool. We're cool. Here's All a right. man. You've done, what, 60 albums or more. You're right. You've done probably a bazillion concerts in yes. your lifetime. Mm -hmm. On any recording, in any concert, have you ever sung a note? <clears throat> no, and I don't intend to. <laughs> really? No, I just, I just didn't, I never did want to sing, except for myself, mm -hmm. my own enjoyment. Well, now, uh, <laughs> let me ask you this, when you're at home, uh, you know, most of us sing in the shower or sing in the car, do you think you sound pretty good? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can carry a tune, but it, it's just, I just mm -hmm. never did want to get into singing. Right. You know, well, you don't need I enjoy to with it, the talent know. that you have in your hands. Well, yeah, speaking of talent. You know, when you look back in the, the, the 60s, you know, the 50s and 60s, early 60s, when right. you were doing a lot of those sessions, yeah. name the people you would be doing sessions with. Now, you did more than one session a day, right? Oh, yeah. A lot of times All it right. would be three and four sessions a day. All right. Give me an idea of a big day for you. Well, do a Patsy Klein session at the Columbia Quonset Hut with Owen. In the go morning. across the street and yeah. do a Jim Reeves session. Or go up to the barn for Owen Bradley and do a Loretta Lynn or someone like that. And mm. that was just... An everyday thing for for years. Now, prior to that, you were doing Elvis sessions too, right? Well, the first uh, session that Elvis did in, in, for RCA was here in Nashville, mm -hmm. at before Studio B was built, you know, and the uh, Heartbreak Hotel was recorded here, and I played on that. I so, oh my gosh! But no, you, no, you, you didn't you didn't realize though what was going on? Oh at that no! Time, you just you know you just going from session to session and. Uh, when you look back on it, it's, it's really unbelievable what we did. You know, know. you still, still hear all these great records we did, and the great artists that came yeah. a, became famous at that point, you know. Yeah. And it's really amazing to me to, to think about it, really. It's and I, it just goes on, the names that I've worked with. It's un, you know, I'm not bragging, I'm just telling uh -huh. you the fact that uh, I was there. So. Oh, Roy Orbison, the Everly Brothers. Yeah. I mean, it, the list really does go on and on. But can you tell us the difference in atmosphere at a recording session between, let's say, Elvis Presley and a Patsy Cline? Well, the, uh, well, the group of guys who worked with both maybe are the, some, most of the same people. Mm -hmm. So the atmosphere was very relaxed. And I think that's really what was one of the keys to the success and is still that way for the recording business in Nashville is the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't go in there and you're not really uptight, stiff and mm -hmm. cramped and you got to do this and nervous, you know, you get relaxed and you, you're Producers we worked with with Chet and Owen, Don Law, uh, Jim Vienno, a lot of great producers, uh, Fred Foster, gave us the opportunity to be creative mm -hmm. and, to, and to add our own, you know, feel, what we right. thought. They didn't come over there and tell us exactly well, what to play. That's what made it work. It, so. it used our, let us be the freedom of expression. Exactly. Now, we, we've heard all kinds of stories from the other artists like Paul and, and Don, who was out <laughs> here earlier. Mm -hmm. Whenever you play concerts, it seems to me like it's more a, a more refined atmosphere, considering you know you're on the piano and everything. Right? right. Am I right? Well, refined. That, does that mean I'm not wearing boots and hats? No, not no. I'm, I'm talking about is the audience. Oh yeah. You know, I was kidding you. But <laughs> I, I know, you know that. what I'm talking. About. I know that. Yeah, it's we do a lot of community concerts when the you know a nice building, nice sound. But nothing bizarre ever happens. <laughs> well, no, just a few little things. We worked fair dates a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Boots and I did quite a few little fair dates until we got decided there's other things to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I'm kidding. I like fair dates. But we were playing at Ohio State Fair. I had just got on stage. Boots opened the show, and I got on stage, and there's about 4,000 people in the grandstand, and it was a dirt track, race track between the bandstand and the, and the uh, audience. That's typical. Usual. Typical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was playing, and all of a sudden I hear this. I look, and there's a big John Deere tractor about the size of the stage. It comes right by the front of the stage, and it's just like a shadow comes over the stage. Well, you're playing. Well, I'm playing my show. You know, I was trying to do my big thing there, entertaining the audience, and here comes this big tractor. Between you it? and the audience. And doing? the audience, yeah. He was cleaning, he was raking the dirt track for the horse race that's coming up or something. During that night. the performance? During the show. He didn't know that there was a show going on. Oh, my. And probably could care less. So what'd you do? Well, he, he got to the end, he turned around, he came back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was still playing, saying, oh, here he comes, you know. Plop, 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 he goes by, you know. Yeah. So somebody goes up there and stops him, says, buddy, aren't you about through with this? Says, we've got a show going on. I said, well, I need to go on down one more time. I said, no, you don't. <laughs> I said, wait till the show is over. Why you never you know. That he would miss well, I tell the you, I, I really impressed him, you know, because I was so good on stage that he just, 
You just no, knocked him resist. out, didn't you? I just knocked him out. I mean, he just stopped on that track and listened to me. <laughs> yeah. Man. Classic Jones, time, though. That was though, fun. You have to have your composure to be able to play through anything and everything that happens. You have to. We've had everything happen. We've had the lights to go out on stage while we were oh, performing. Oh, man. And that was one place was at a fair date where the Ferris wheel even stopped. You know, people screaming. Mm -hmm. We've had the windstorm, a thunderstorm come up and blow the back of the stage off, you know. Yeah, well. And it creased Boots' his new car one time. You know. Yeah. And hey, when the lights go out, can you still keep playing? Do you have to see the keyboard? I don't know. <laughs> Let's try that. You don't. Don't ask me those questions. We'll get you to play in the dark next time. Let's Thank you. I'd like to new, do now a, a song that I played for my oldest daughter's wedding a few years ago. Time flies when uh, you're having fun, but it's been nearly 12 years ago that my oldest daughter got married. Of course, I was embarrassed because I was so young at the wedding. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, it's a special song that meant a lot to her, and I might as well tell you about my, the rest of my family. That's my oldest daughter, so obviously I have a younger daughter. Her name is Donna. She's married. I have two little kids. Diane, my oldest daughter, I've got to tell you about her first now because she's oldest. She's married and has a fine husband named Bobby. Uh, and two little, I've got two little granddaughters, Jenny, who is nine years old, Jesse, who is six years old. Jenny's in the fourth grade. Jesse's in the first. And I get to see them just about every day. They're the prettiest little things you'll ever want to see in your life. They're as sweet as they can be. They're just like their mother and their Aunt Donna was when they were growing up. It's just like an instant rerun for to see them every day. And especially Jenny looks so much like Diane did when she was growing up. But they're sweet little girls. And, of course, Donna, my youngest daughter, is married to a fine man. By the way, I couldn't have handpicked two better guys. I guess I give them credit for having good choice, you know, of picking out. Because I don't think I could have found two guys any better than Joe and Bobby are, and they've got a sweet family, a good family. And uh, I've got a little grandson. His name is Jason. I've got two of them. One, Jason is four years old, April 2nd, and Josh is eight months old. And uh, he's just in his little uh, walker now, and he's banging into everything, you know, going every which way. And uh, Jason, 
He's an amazing little child. He's already playing the piano and singing. He has been for two years. You know, I couldn't even wave bye-bye until I was five years old. <laughs> but he's, you know, he, he wanted, you know, Jenny and Jesse doesn't play very much. He doesn't have really a musical ear like Jason does. And he's able to hear a song and just go to the piano and pick it out. And he told me, he told his mama, says, well, his real, you know, his full name is Jason Floyd Coleman. He said, well, mama said, maybe the reason I play is because my name is Floyd, like my granddad. <laughs> and I said, well, it could be, I don't know. But he, he is, uh, I, I just have to uh, bring him down here and show him to you to, for you to believe him, but he's already reading probably second grade level. I, it's scary how much, how well he can read and write. And I don't know what they're going to do when school starts, to tell you the truth. But uh, he may be a uh, substitute uh, teacher or something. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, he, he's got a lot to learn. I know that about being around kids and everything. He goes to two days, Mother's Day out, they call it now, two days a week. But uh, I was taking him to school. He called me the other morning. He calls us, you know, often. Granddad said, can you take me to school in the morning? I said, I'd be glad to. So I went over there and got him. We were riding over, and he had his little seat belt fastened, you know. He was looking up, and the way kids think, their minds, he said, Granddad said, see those? It was some jet contrails in the air, you know, the clouds on the clear blue sky. He said, see those airplane tracks? You know, who had ever thought they'd call them airplane tracks but a child, you know? And I never thought of it that way. But anyway... And by the way, I am married. <coughs> Going on 35 years. I was married when I was 12, I guess it was, something like that. Thank you. Of course, I've got a sweet little country girl from Arkansas. Her name is Mary. I do love her. Uh, now, let's see. I was going to do a song, wasn't I? Yeah. I forgot. Oh, I got pictures, too, after the show, if y'all want to see the grandchildren. <laughs> This is called Twelfth of Never.
Thank you. Now this other song I was telling you about, I played for Donna, my youngest daughter's wedding. And it's, uh, it's a great song, a good arrangement. Bill McElhaney wrote the arrangement for this. I know he did. It's called Morning Has Broken. Thank you. Welcome back. Our next guest brought a whole new sound to country music with his unique piano stylings. And as a matter of fact, tonight he brought a string section with him. Ladies and gentlemen, here is one of the creators of the Nashville sound, Mr. Floyd Kramer.
Thank you. Floyd Kramer, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. All right. This is like all-star night here on Primetime Country. Oh, I'm telling you, isn't this fun? Yeah, it is fun. You know, I can't, uh, I, was, I was talking to one of the guys in the band, and I, and I can't tell you how many times that I've talked to keyboard players in the bands that I've worked with, and I said, you know, kind of give it that little Floyd Kramer thing in here. <laughs> how does That's it feel to be, to be so much associated with a certain sound? Well, I'm, I'm very flattered that, uh, you know, that they've accepted what I do and, and the country sound, that, you know, that I, I did many years ago. It feels great. It really well, you really, you it's really a compliment really carved a niche for yourself. There's no doubt yeah, about it. I'm very it. flattered. I really Yeah. Well, you sound like you're playing as well as ever. Do you play an awful lot? you still perform a oh, lot? Oh, yeah. We do a lot of concert dates, and sh you know, all over the country. We do a lot of community concerts and uh, symphony dates and just all kind of things. Do you like playing with orchestras? Oh, yes. That's fun. Yeah. And, I, and we play little groups that just... We stay busy, and, and, and I enjoy doing concert dates. Really what's, what's your favorite configuration? A, 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 a little group or, or well, orchestra? They, they They're both, different things. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, what we use tonight is what I normally have on, on stage, uh -huh. is my rhythm section in a small string group. And mm -hmm. we, we do a great variety of different type songs. Right. Know? So, of course, it's fun to have a symphony around you, too. Oh, you yeah. Know? You feel like you're in the middle of it, and the... Sometimes you want to jump out in the audience and sit there and listen. Yeah. <laughs> it's like being in front of a big old freight train. Uh, that's sometimes. right, absolutely. Yeah. You know, you worked for a long time on the Louisiana Hayride, am I correct? I did, uh -huh. yes. You worked with some huge stars down there. Yeah. Why don't we play a little game? Like, I will give you a name and you just give me a kind of a thumbnail sketch. What, what pops in your mind? Jim Reeves. Oh, <clears throat> well, we worked the road in, throughout Texas with Jim on, and on the Louisiana Hayride. Uh -huh. And of course, I. I was lucky enough to play on most of his hit records that he recorded for RCA here in Nashville. And, you know, to hear those songs is, is such a thrill uh -huh. that we did years ago. How about, you know, go another one. Farron Young. Farron Young, the Young Sheriff. Well, he started out, we, we were working with Webb Pierce, and Webb hired Farron to front the band. Uh huh. We got to where, well, we wanted to make more money than we were making with Webb. So <laughs> Webb, Farron said, come on, boys, you go with us. So we quit Webb. We left him in Houston one show date. Came back on a bus to Shreveport. Told Farron, we're with him, boy. Huh? He had appendicitis and was out of work for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> You're with him in the hospital. Yes, and so we went back, crawling back to <laughs> Webb. <laughs> Please uh, give us a job. Here's another name, uh, Hank Williams. Oh, well, Hank worked the Louisiana Hayride. Right. We did do some shows. I was working with Red Sabine, and we did package shows in South Louisiana. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was, it was right in his peak of all those hits. Man. And he is making an appearance on Louisiana Hayride, uh, not only in Streetport he would perform, but occasionally the whole Hayride would go to a small, like Kilgore, Texas, or right. somewhere and do their, a, a show completely away from Streetport. Just, mm -hmm. And they would load everybody on buses. So I've been on the bus with Hank Williams singing Kalija. Just said, this is a new song, it's just coming out. Wow. And so and that's a thrill to think back on those times, you know. Let's see, one more. Yeah. Uh, Elvis Presley. Uh, Elvis. He worked the Louisiana Hayride. <laughs> Somebody just fainted out yes. here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I met a lot of people and uh, he worked the Louisiana Hayride when we were there. Yeah. And we, we did some tours in Texas when he was, his first Sun Records came out. Uh -huh. And there, of course it was new and different, exciting. and. So I did know Elvis, and we traveled. You know, we toured right. Texas quite often. We worked a flatbed truck at one place. Wow. Set up a little spin, right. it, spin it piano on the flatbed truck and worked. <laughs> but anyway, that was fun. And then when he signed with RCA in 50, 1956, I had moved to Nashville, and I had the pleasure of working on his first RCA hit, Heartbreak Hotel. Man. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Ooh. And many others. Thanks, uh, well, we're just delighted to have you on Thank the you. show. Floyd Thank Kramer, you. ladies and gentlemen. Thank well, we got more music coming up right now. You know, you can catch Floyd Kramer April 20th in Valley, Alabama, and with the North Carolina Symphony in Regency Park in Raleigh, North Carolina. And now, once again, we get to hear the magic fingers of Floyd Kramer.
Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're really a nice audience, a super audience. And in fact, I'd like to know where you're going to be peering next so we can come see you. That'd be nice. Well, maybe we can come back and see you all sometime. That'd be fun, too. Yeah, thank you. I'd like to do a uh, medley of songs written by who I think was one of the greatest country singers and songwriters that ever lived, Mr. Hank Williams.
Thank you. Thank you. How about a nice hand for the musicians? Mr. Henry Strelecki, stand up. Mr. Mark Morris, Harold Bradley, and Bill McElhaney, and the entire Richardson Symphony. Stand up, please. Aren't they great? They are super. Oh. It's great. Thanks again for being here. We appreciate it. Thanks to uh, Chris and Judy for their hospitality. And we're, we're going to do another song that uh, you may have heard of this song. It's a theme from a Friday night television soap opera. It comes on once a week. Shows part of this here a city. I recorded this song for RCA, and it did pretty well in the country charts, in spite of the fact it wasn't a country song. But this kind of gives everybody a chance to, to do something. Ah, let's do it. It's called Theme from Dallas. Thank you. We're just coming back anyway. <laughs> I just want to stretch my legs. Well, since you asked for it, let's do one more song. And this is a good old uh, song that uh, you can so identify with parts of Texas. <laughs> some of you people may call this, some of you sophisticated people may call this the William Tell Overture. We call it the Long Ranger theme. <laughs> 